Although iOS in its current iteration is not the most groundbreaking or history-defining operating system that it used to be at some point in time, but that doesn't mean there are not a ton of hidden features that will come in handy if you just learn about them. So in this video, I plan to share a few of my favorite features that I use on a daily basis, and I've seen those features be underutilized or people just don't even know about them. To start with, let's start with one of the most interesting ones, which would be the ability to change home screens automatically. This is something that is a subset feature of the focus modes feature that was introduced first in iOS 15. With focus modes, if you set up a home screen for a certain context, you can enable that home screen when the focus mode turns on. But since you're able to enable and disable focus modes automatically, you could also change home screens automatically. I'm accepting all forms of added here in the comments below. The next one on the list I have is voice control. From the sound of it, it sounds boring. It sounds like a feature that existed back in iOS 4 or 5, I believe. So to simply break it down, this feature allows you to control your phone by just shouting commands at it. It's not like asking Siri to change a setting. There's no activation phrase. Once it is enabled, when you yell a command, your phone responds to that command automatically. For instance, you can control apps like TikTok by just yelling next or previous. So I've also set up an automation that enables this functionality as soon as I enter TikTok. So any concern that you might have had that your phone is listening to you at all times is not a real concern because it gets disabled as soon as you exit TikTok. Next on my list is begrudgingly the ability to enable dark mode on applications that don't support it. And that to applications like Amazon. This is a crime and I can rant about it for hours, but let me show you how to enable dark mode on applications that don't support it. So in iOS accessibility settings, you have something called per app settings. With per app settings, you can enable a certain accessibility setting such as smart invert, which basically takes all the colors that you see on the screen and inverts them. But since it is smart, it identifies the images and avoids converting those images to a negative version of those images. Now let's talk about the most used feature, the most referenced feature, the most, oh, I want to flaunt my iOS device feature called Spotlight. I see people using just search for applications or do web searches, but Spotlight can do a lot more than just that. You can calculate basic math problems. You can convert currency directly in Spotlight based on Yahoo Finance, I guess. And you can run shortcuts, of course. You can add tasks to third-party applications that support this functionality. If they have a Siri action, it will probably show up when you search for it here. I cannot tell you how many people I've heard complain about how there's not a weather application for iPad. You already bought Dark Sky, just make an iPad app. Do you install a weather app on your MacBooks? Do you install a weather app on your PC? Similarly, on an iPad, just search for weather on Spotlight. And if you want detailed weather, just tap on it. It will take you to the website and show you detailed weather. And it's up to date. You can actually drag messages from one chat. You can forward a message from one conversation to another conversation by simply dragging it to the conversation you want it to go to. But it definitely feels more natural when you do it on an iPad with a split screen setup. I don't really use Apple Notes on a daily basis, but for this one functionality, I jump back to Apple Notes once in a while just to, just to enjoy the ability to add tags to Apple Notes. You can add tags to any of your notes by just simply typing a hashtag. This is a very basic level functionality compared to other note-taking applications, but it is nice to be able to filter a bunch of notes from completely different locations and review them all in one location. So the next one that I have on this list is something that I don't even know how people are choosing to ignore it because it is literally staring in your face when you're using Safari. If you are looking for a specific word on a web page, you can start by typing that word in the Safari address bar. And now instead of tapping on one of the suggested search term, just tap on the on this page option. Now you're looking for that word on that web page. You can scan documents from the files app directly. Once you open the files app, click on the three dots menu you should be able to see an option that says scan a document that opens the camera, lets you take a picture and whatever you took a picture of is saved as a PDF document at a location of your choice. Super simple, super easy. You don't need a scanner application on iPhones anymore. And if you knew about that feature already, and if you are an iPad user who has used that functionality in the past, I will recommend you to watch this video over here, which basically points out all the shortcomings of iPad OS and how to overcome them. Anyways, thank you for watching. This is Gate. 